Hi, I'm Rick Jansen. Welcome to my fly tying channel. In today's episode, we're looking at the Caddis Dry Fly, and no BC fly box would be complete without the Miculax Sedge. Let's take a look at that today. Welcome to my fly bench. You know there are many caddis dry flies out there to choose from, but in British Columbia the Miculac Sedge is the gold standard. Let's take a look at the materials you're going to need to tie this fly. Device I have a number 8 3x long hook. To that I have attached my 6 aught black unithread. I've wrapped the whole shank and thread. I took the liberty of doing that ahead of time because I didn't think you wanted to watch me wrap thread on a hook. Our first item to go in is the tail and we're using nail elk hair for that. Now the uh, caddis that hatch in the local waters that I am thinking of, the one I like to fish, have a fairly pale colored caddis. The waters are very clear and the colors in these, these caddis are muted. So I've gone with pretty pale elk hair. Of course you'll want to match your favorite waters and so you may be using a darker, a grayer or browner elk hair than I will be. So these are quite blonde and I'm going to put that in there so it's about double the gap of the hook for a tail and we'll place that in place, pinch everything, and then give it a couple of looser wraps, cinch down on it, and then wind through those tag ends and back to secure that into place. Now it's time to give this a haircut and a little couple of tricks I do. One is to pull all those hairs up above the hook shank, try to avoid cutting in the area of my thread. Um, hate that when I cut my thread right here but sometimes it happens. So we pull those all up, give them a haircut, and if I have to cut below the hook, I'll take my finger and pull the thread back and away so that it's out of the way, and I give it a couple of snips there of the hairs that are below the hook shank that I can't quite reach and pull up. Now I don't have to get this perfect as I can finish off trimming it and giving it a nice trim when the fly is completed by spinning it in the vise. So now I'll got given those the major cut that they need and I'll go through those tag ends with the thread and back firmly securing and cementing that into place. There's a lone wayward there. We just pinch that and yank it off. I'm forming a dubbing loop with my dubbing needle and bodkin. I got this from a, a fly tying friend over 40 years ago who had made it at home out of piano wire. And it simply bent that triangle end into shape, leaving a bit of a gap there to get your thread in. And grinding the tip to a point is good for clearing the eye of the hook if you've got head cement in there. And uh, also great as a dubbing tool. So I put the thread into the triangular end of that and create a dubbing loop of about two to three inches. Bring that forward a few, th few wraps there. Still some errant hairs there that I can catch at the end if I need to. And I'll place some dubbing between the two sides of this loop. And uh, I've got, a, again, a, a pale blend of olive that I've mixed with yellow and a bit of brown. Um, I mixed this in an old coffee grinder. Not the one that my wife and family used to grind their coffee. I found that upsets them a little bit. So, um, ha! The old grinder will have to do. And I give that a twist, and I found uh, by slackening the line, once you've given it a few tw turns of the twist, slackening the tension on the noodle a bit and twisting catches more of those fibers, and then you can pull it taut, taut again. And I spin it now and then with my fingertips and give that a final few turns to form a nice, concise, and neat dubbing noodle. Now we'll wrap around those tag ends, covering them up, and going up just a little way up the hook shank 
ready for our next cluster of elk hair. So we'll tie that off, clip it off the tag end, stack our next patch of elk hair, which I go slightly smaller than the tail. Not a whole lot smaller, just a little bit. And we do that with each successive cluster, just reducing the size of it just a, a little bit by a few hairs. I'm going to tap those to align the tips. And we get those pulled out of the stacker. Now I measure the length of these to be about a half a length of the, t the previous tie-in of hair. So if that's full length, we're coming out to about half length here. And we're going to pinch everything, give it a couple of loose wraps, and then cinch it into place at going through those tag ends to secure everything and then going our way, working our way back a little bit to orient those tips toward the rear. Again, we're going to give this a haircut and I will do the next couple of clusters without comment and speed up the process so you can just see the process. Now this final cluster of elk hair, <clears throat> we're going to secure into place here, but we, and we'll cut off the tag hens, but not completely. We're going to form a shovel nose on the front of this fly that sits up above the eye. But before I do that, I'd like to put a couple of wraps, two or three in front of the cluster to hold it up from the eye. It just simplifies tying on your tippet at the time you're on the water. Then we give that a trim, about an eye's length cluster there. And we're going to finish this fly behind the eye, uh, behind this cluster of hair here. Final item to get tied in is a fine furnace hackle. I use furnace because I have a good cape of it. You could use brown or even grizzly, but uh, I prefer something in the brown range. And by fine, I mean a long slender taper to the feather. And then what we do is we'll strip the stem there, we'll pull the fibers back until we find a length that complements the gap of the hook. And there we have it. So I'm going to secure that into place. Cut off the tag end. Take my hackle pliers and give it about four turns. And we have just about completed our Miculax edge. One, two, there we go. Now secure that in place. I'll go around the thread below the hook, wrap the thread <coughs> over, excuse me. Go around the thread, wrap it over, around the thread, wrap it over. We cut off that tip end. And whip finish. <coughs> Get the whip finish tool on there. And we'll whip finish behind the hackle. I think you're going to enjoy this fly, especially fishing it. It's very exciting to see this thing disappear in the boils that trout make when they, when they chase these things down. Um, it's uh, one of the better patterns for flotation too, given the high amount of elk hair on there, highly buoyant fly. You can treat it with floatant and that'll extend its life. 
But I'd have a few of these in the box. If you encounter a good hatch, you get a water soaked log fly, you'd want a second one to follow up with. Tight lines out there. Good luck and thank you for watching.